You know, the conventional way of learning to solo by memorizing scale patterns doesn't work. Not really. I've experienced it myself, and I've seen student after student get frustrated by doing it. We'll learn a scale pattern, practice it up and down, and we'll start to feel like we're making progress because we're playing the scale more efficiently. But when we go to improvise, it just doesn't sound right. But there's another path we can take. We can learn licks, maybe even licks of the greats. But that's problematic too, because when we play, we usually have trouble remembering all those licks, and they never really fit exactly anyway. And again, it just sounds all wrong. But there's a simple thing that we can do to bring these two ideas together to sound great every time. So in this video, I'm going to show you a simple tip to marry together licks and scales musically. I'm going to show you how anybody, anybody can do it. And I'm going to demonstrate how you can use this tip to sound great every time you solo. The other day I heard Are You Gonna Go My Way by Lenny Kravitz. You know, that huge hit he had with that Hendrix vibe to it. It's so simple, it's just one lick repeated over and over. But it reminded me of an idea that really helped me and it's helped a ton of my students too. It involves something called a lick fragment. Here, I'll show you this one. Now, we could look at this analytically by saying it's part of the B minor pentatonic scale and that it ends on the root B. That's all well and good, but that's not really the tip. The key to this method is that we think of that lick fragment as the end of a lick. And that leads us to the next question of when do we want to play that lick fragment? And answering that question solves a big problem that most players have. They don't carry through their ideas to completion, so they just sound like they're noodling randomly meandering through a scale or playing a random lick and not really ever making a statement. Okay, so what is it called and how does it work? Let's start out with how it works. It works like this. We'll start with a simple two bar or two measure track like this. And we're just gonna play over and over on this two bar track. You can hear it sounds kind of Pink Floydish, but this is the key, two measures long, two bars long. But the kicker is we have to end whatever it is that we're going to do in two bars. That's eight beats and only eight beats. And it's that constraint that forces us to be a little bit more compact and intentional in our play and a lot less noodly. Okay, great. But even here, many players will still find it difficult. So we're going to tie it together, scales, licks, and timing. We make it easier by always using our lick fragment to end our phrase. <laughs> So it's called two bar phrasing and that's how we tie it all together. Take a B minor pentatonic based lick and play it at the right time. In other words, music. Now here's how anyone can make it work. We'll start off by just playing our lick fragment within those two measures so we get an idea of when to start it. One, two, three, four. So it's on the first beat of the second measure. Anyone can do that and it already sounds musical. I'd be happy to put that into one of my solos. But we can do more and it's a ton of fun too. Let me show you. Now we'll add some other licks in there, but we'll always end it with that lick fragment to keep us honest and end it on time. So you see, you really get a feel for when you need to end your phrase, and the whole thing sounds like music, not a mushy bowl of noodles. But you might be wondering how to use this for more, to come up with more good endings for your phrases, in other words, lick fragments. Well, click here, because in this video, I show you the ins and outs of how to do it and stop noodling forever. So click here, I'll see you in the next video, and I'll see you on down the road.